Yo, what's up, people? This is my review for Tomorrow People, uh, Season 1, Episode 22, the season finale for Season 1. And a lot of stuff went down. All right. Uh, whoa, a lot of stuff went down. So I, I think this episode tried a little too hard. It tried a little too hard. They tried to force feed us all this new information, like last minute, like, oh, did we forget to tell you this? Or did we, did we forget to tell you this? Oh, here's a new enemy. Here's a new threat. Like, wait, wait, what? It just gave us all this stuff. So it wasn't really no moment to breathe or analyze or even think about anything because after the one scene, it's the next thing, next thing, next thing. But, uh, yo, one thing I did say I, was, uh, I wasn't I was too happy about was Jedekiah losing his powers. I mean, at the end of that episode, we see him flipping around cars and all this other kind of stuff, and now he's lost his powers within the first five minutes. Like, wait, what? So, oh, girl, and we actually learned that I think her name was Irene, the little girl, who's actually pretty smart. She lost her powers permanently because Jedekiah took them from her. And we also learned that the powers do not stick to humans very long. They're only for a limited amount of time. So he took her powers, but now she's out of power. So damn, it's just messed up. Jedekiah got no powers and now he got no, now she ain't got no powers. So man, that's pretty screwed up. But yo, let's move on to Roger's death, man. Roger dying. I was just like, what the hell, man? He basically died in vain because his death did not accomplish anything. The machine already was powered. Um, Jedekiah shot the man thinking it would stop the machine. Didn't work. And now we got Roger did. He's only been back for like an episode and a half. So, well, at least this part of the story is over. I will say that because I was kind of getting tired of that. We got to find Roger. We got to rescue him from Limbo. All that's over. Roger's here, and now Roger's gone. I don't like how they did it, though. I mean, he, he just got into the show. We barely got the man. We, we didn't see the man do anything besides lift a few wine glasses, okay? He hasn't really exhibited any kind of power because they keep on saying he's the most powerful. You're not as powerful as your father and all that stuff. We haven't even seen Roger do anything. He hasn't stopped no time like Stephen has. So, you know, that's up for debate right there. So the machine is ready to go. It's, it's ready to go. Roger's dead, and... Uh, the founder, he wants to clean up all his loose ends, okay? He wants to get rid of Cora and all the tomorrow people that could possibly get in his way, alter his plans. And he enlists uh, Natalie, which I said, she looks very fine in the ultra costume, you know, all the black looking very gothic up in there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they enlist her. She fits perfectly into the role. But they try to trick Russell. I'm like, why y'all tricking Russell? Why even include him on this in, if you know he's not going to go along with it? Because the founder says we're just going to subdue them. But he brings in tomorrow people that have the ability to kill. And that's one more thing. They bring in these new agents for the tomorrow people to have like a conflict with. And people that won't be compromised. Because like if you were a human and you wanted to kill squad, why would you still be fighting for this man knowing that he's going to kill you? Knowing that your days are numbered. So they have to bring in some new uh, aid to the founder so it could seem logical that they would want to help him out and progress his uh further his goals and plans so they bring in these uh, tomorrow people they can kill i'm like wait hold on man i thought john was the only one so they gave us that they got steven over here looking for this actually this serum that's supposed to enable him to kill too and um uh, I, don't, I understand his reasoning besides that because the founder does need to die and i, I see where he's coming from man but they just they kind of ambushed us, man. They ambushed us with a whole bunch of stuff. And Russell, on the other hand, like when they was talking about the whole thing, you know, going down the course later and stuff, they should just told Russell from the jump, we're going to kill them or not include him at all. Because Russell, when he finds out the truth, he's just going to sabotage the plan. So why keep this a secret from him? What? It's just, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So on the way down... Russell's actually trying to talk to Nally telepathically, and then the other guy reveals what they are, and they coming through, and they jack up the layer. I'm, I'm guessing that everybody else, did anyone else get killed? That it, uh, because you know Russell came in, he sweeped everybody off. Core got out, but Nally stayed behind. So I mean, that would lead me to believe that everybody else in the layer is dead. Like who was there on Core's side would be dead because they'd be caught off guard too. Because only person who saw it coming was Cora, and she had a chance to escape, but no one else saw it coming, so they be dead, right? Right? What happened to everybody else in the layer? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. 
And also that one part when John was talking to Corey about, you know, what happened to us. We used to, I used to be able to read your mind. I'm like, is he is he playing a trick on us? Because <laughs> you don't got no powers. That's why you can't read your mind no more. Duh. But nah. <laughs> How how you go talk to Core like that, knowing that you've been hooking up with Astrid? You the one that fell out of grace, man. What's he talking about? The relationships on this show are so like, I don't know what they doing with the relationships on this show, man. And they got Astrid like and Steven at one point. Now they got Astrid hooking up with John, and they got Cora and Steven getting back together slowly but surely. I don't know what is going on with these relationships. I can't predict who is going to love who, but it looks like to be a, a triangle of four. These four characters are in the same continuous loop all over the place, and they go keep on loving each other and switching roles and switching it up. It's like an episode of Friends. <laughs> and also that one scene where John and Astrid kind of froze in time while they was kissing. I was just thinking in my head like, of course, she's going to come outside and see that and just, you know, she's going to shake her head like, mm -mm -mm. that's what you get, John. You know, she probably be pretty pissed at that point because, you know, it's implied that they're together. But Cora hasn't actually seen it. And, you know, seeing is believing. And, uh, yeah, that probably would have changed their mood a little bit about that. <laughs> All right. So our gang storms the Ultra headquarters and we got the Death Squad full of tomorrow people versus everybody else. Okay. So, I mean, the fight scene was all right. I can't believe Korra and them actually won. I, I mean, you got tomorrow people that can kill, so they're not, you know, inhibited in any way. But for, for in their defense, they did have uh, Astrid and um, John on the rooftop sniping. And they made Astrid actually useful by spot being a spotter for the sniper, which I think was pretty cool. Have her involved in the battle and actually helping out. So that was awesome. And then we got uh, Korra versus the Founder. Oh my God, Korra versus the Founder. That was not a good fight at all, man. That wasn't even a fight. <laughs> Korra got slaughtered. <laughs> Threw her through the glass window. It's like, get out of here, you scum. <laughs> there she goes. There she goes. Okay, no. Nah. <laughs> but yo, Korra got manhandled, man. And then the Founder versus Steven. All right, and that's the fight I've been waiting to see, all right? So the Founder, I want to see what he can do with his hands. Does he have any real combat skills? Not really, all right? The, the founder is basically heavily adept at relying on his powers to fight. So if someone put like a, um, some kind of field on him or, you know, a D-chip or something that actually worked to take away his powers, he would be useless, man. They would be like out of line because he doesn't know how to really fight. He does rely on telekinesis and, you know, um, to actually fight and everything else. And the fight between Steven, it was actually pretty good for the most part, man. Steven actually drawn on the power of his did father and you know stopping the machine from actually full blown activation and taking it in and defeating the founder once and for all or maybe all right he basically threw him into like a a vortex of death looks like but it's probably just like that limbo area that um roger was stuck in so that's where the founder is right now contemplating and probably going to make his return if there are any more uh seasons or coming episodes so the founder is gone. Hallelujah. 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 Now the scene outside Orchard Tech where we got uh, Natalie actually putting a bullet into Cora. I was just like, will someone please kill Natalie, please? But no, she does her final evil deed and she shoots and kills Cora. And Steven comes out just a moment too late, sees this happen, and reverses time. Not only does he stop it, he reverses the bullets, he reverses Natalie's uh, disappearance, puts her back on the scene, gun in his hand. All right, crazy. That was a crazy move right there. And, uh, you know, when he now when he catches Natalie with the gun, you know, he grabs the gun from her, and he's like, this is not what we're all about. Really, Steven? This is not, that's all you got to say to her? He, the girl just killed your lover. That's all you got to say to her? This ain't no time for a lecture, man. He should at least gave her one of these blows, man. Gave her a nice, uh, uh. For real. She just, and now he let her get away. That's not good. Just another threat lingering. You know she has the ability to kill. She's actually more dangerous. Her and probably that uh, killer death squad is probably still out there. Some of those uh, remaining remnants of that, whoever uh, John and um, Asher did not take out. But yo, that was cool as hell. 
And later on in the scenes, we get to see some after effects of that. Cora actually talking about how she still feels differently after that moment in time, which I think is very cool indeed, man, because that's that's going to add a new layer to the story. And uh, Steven's going to have to confess about what he did. And I don't know how Cora is actually going to accept it or how her character is going to change in the coming episodes because of this act, which actually has me really intrigued, but not as intrigued as Jedekiah. All right, let's talk about Jedekiah. Jedekiah. He was the original villain at the beginning of the show, and he's still the villain at the end of the show. All right. He's been coercing, basically massaging John's ego this whole episode, talking to him about how I love you like a son, playing these old throwback movies about how I gave a birthday gift, the knife, you know, Pat knife is passed down from all my generations and I gave to you like a son, whatever. All that was BS, man. So basically he calls John back into the, uh, back into his apartment and he injects John with this serum. The serum was supposed to give John back his powers. And you know, Jedekiah did not lie. He didn't lie about that. It gave John back his powers, but damn, they did have a cost and the cost was steep. Jedekiah's ultimate plan is to weaponize the tomorrow people, make them all soldiers, brainless soldiers that follow his uh, orders without any kind of resistance, without any kind of contestants. OK, this is not good, man. Not good at all. So he's trying to sell, I guess, sell these soldiers off to the military to make him some money. I guess after he's found out that he cannot be a tomorrow person, no matter what he does, he's actually resorting to this tactic. And why is he doing this? I have no idea, man. Will he do this to Steven too? His own flesh and blood? Will he actually resort to that? I think he would, man. Because he has to know that Steven was not going to accept this. And this is like, he's not going to take this line down. So he's willing to actually sacrifice Steven too. So what the... F I don't understand Jedekiah, man. I don't know what his end game is right here. Is it, is it money? Is it all for money? Because I don't see him as someone who's just like money hungry. I saw him as power hungry, man. He wants the power, but the money... I don't know. We'll have to see about that, man. But John is lost. Jedekiah shows us him pages of Korra and uh, Russell and them, and he doesn't recognize none of them. So, you know, that sucks for John, man. He's not in a good place at the end of the episode. And if they're, if this continues further, then everybody else is going to be going through the motions, man. They will have to take down John one way or the other, man. You can tell by looking at his hair that something's wrong with him. John, why is your hair got so much grease inside? Hmm. You ain't right. <laughs> but guys, that's all I got to say about the review overall. I mean, about the episode overall. It was pretty It was pretty intense. I ain't gonna lie. Definitely had me jumping back and forth on my, on my thoughts. What I was thinking, I was like, man, what's, what, what's going on was basically the main thought <laughs> during the whole episode. It was just too much all over the place, personally, for me. But I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Go ahead and give me a like if you enjoyed this. And please go ahead and provide some discussion for me to interact with because uh, I want to hear you guys' uh, thoughts about the episode, what you guys think, because I'm pretty sure it's very different than what I've just said here. All right. So I'm out of here. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your night. Tomorrow, people, season two. Let's make it happen.